So I want to I want to move on like to the portion of the part which I think I'm more really intrigued in um, the mogul, the businessman, the 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 taxes, accountants, business, profit and loss, ROI, marketing segmentation. Like how I see you now, oh. this is this is like. You know, when we was talking about outside about some of my plans and my dreams and this and that, I love seeing what you've done because I see manifestation. Mm. We have to see this. Mm. The same thing when you're like when you're seeing so solid and you're inside thinking, "Yo, I want that." Mm. You're using social me- media. I've seen now as an effective way because you're letting people see, like, "Hey, you know, you, you know what that's about, mm. but did you know what this is about?" All right. So, one fir- first thing I'll say yeah, if within even using my platforms, yeah. Um, I feel like there's a thin line between showing off and inspiration. And a lot of it is cross for showing off. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, like, you know, years ago, when when I was growing up, because I'm an old man, obviously, yeah, um, people used to say, like, conduct yourself properly because you don't know who's watching. Yeah? And now, the whole world's watching on social media, but they're not conducting themselves properly. You're giving off the wrong energy. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Where people don't want to do business with you. Like, so going back into quick for, before I go into the base buzz thing, I did the films. Remember when I finished um the music, I stopped doing music and I done rolling with the nines. Samurai, bring it the biggest and the bashiest music in the UK. Talking about three guys calling themselves time serve straight out of South London. Rick are trying to kick down the doors. Three boys is going oh, time serve. Yeah. And again, that was the first gangster film ever to be in Leicester Queer Cinema. The only one you had before that, and that was Bullet Boy about killing a dog with Asher D. <laughs> Salute to him, you get me? But rolling with the nines was that real tuggy, do you get what I'm trying to say? And um, again, we put that together. We put that together. I put out the soundtrack to that with Kano, Miss Dynamite, Sway, every big artist you could think of in the UK, PDC, everybody I gave a shot on that, on that, on that soundtrack, on my own record label. The soundtrack to a movie on my own record label, which I starred in the movie. Before that, like, street niggas ain't never been in the movie screens. I remember Tim West was saying, yo, you know what, yo, because we know Tim from way back when he had his little situation when Tim got shot. Mm-hmm. Tim, Tim been in the field. I don't know about these new guys. Tim been in the field. He knows. Tim knows what's, what's, what's what. So, EC man, he's like, bro, I got to congratulate you because that's the first time I've seen a dude make that transition from there. And I'm looking at him in the big movie screens in the cinema. I'm like, shit, it's actually happening. But people don't, even give Rolling with the Nines a credit. Because people in the day that we live in now, it feel like if you give someone credit, it downplays your achievements. Which is sad, which it don't. So anyway, put that to the side. After Rolling with the Nines, I did Dead Man Running with 50 Cent. Here you go, Mr. Vigo. Proper English fair. What is this cow? The Jenny Lewis. Are you actually trying to tell me you will consume the contents of this cup? You said you want something traditional in there, right up on the top ten list, like double decker boss, crown jewels, jelly eels. Look, no disrespect to your royal family, public transportation, or national cuisine, but if you don't get this shit the fuck out of my face, me and you, we gonna fall out, nigga, all right? <laughs> yes, Mr. Fico. Before you go into that, that's a key point, bro. Cause that I remember rolling with the nines, but that is a shift of everything that came thereafter. Cause it, it, it's almost like we can acknowledge everything else, but it seems like I'm not saying that people are trying to like rub your achievements out of the way, but hearing you say that and just like thinking, oh, to be honest with you, bro, yeah, they do. They do that a lot when it comes to me because um, you know they don't want. Oh, C was the first person to do this or C was the person and I'm not somebody that is out there screaming at people are like yeah but you don't say it enough and you don't say this and you don't never tell your story and you know what yeah I know myself I'm not interested in trying to convince somebody what I am or what I did I'm just going to keep cracking on to do what I got to do I know what I achieve and I know what I've done to set, set levels coming from the pavement because so people are so interested in me to talk this and say all these type of things why do you know so much about me if I'm, irre- if I'm not relevant 
Do you get what I'm trying to say? Why do you know my story? Like, I don't know you. But at the same time, back to the point, is rolling with a nine, yeah, was a should have been a standstill time. Because what we went through to get in that Premier Leicester Square was headache. They shut down our after party again. The police didn't want me on set again. These type of things, they tried to ban man from my own Premier. These things they was always trying to do. So artists now, when you got like all the intent and you got all these type of stuff, I was doing that way back 2005. When street niggas wasn't even on the screens, when even rap guys from the from our urban scene wasn't in movies yet, we put Dizzy Rascal in there, Kano's in there, loads of different people was in there. Nobody mentions like when you say, "Oh, like what's the one of the first British gangster films?" Nobody says Rolling with the Nines. Why? Rolling with the Nines is the grittiest shit that ever came out. You saw my spray machine guns, Mac Tens, shit that was really going on. Like, what, what, what you're talking about, Bullet Boy? Not, no disrespect to Bullet Boy, or what, kiddohood? You're going to talk about kiddohood and adulthood, you're going to talk about rolling with the nines? Come on, man, like, are you serious? And the crazy thing is, it, the music reflects almost something that you put out. Yeah. Nearly, nearly 15 years, or 13 yeah. years ago. But yeah, yeah. Because you're hearing that in the music, like, man, they saying they're doing this and they're doing yeah, that. Yeah, well, when I see... When you Even see, the music videos are sometimes simulating some It's of simulating, that. and, and, and the, the, the people in these movies, and the people now, the rap stars, rappers, Scorcher, Kano, these type of people are all doing... I did that. And I was from the pavement. And I was in the cinema. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, not in no big-headed way. I'm more saying it on, like, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, we can, there's no, there's, just because you come from somewhere don't mean you have to stay there, basically. So, Rolling with the Nine was a whole new thing. And then we did Dead Man Running, um, which we had uh, Ashley Cole, Rio Ferdinand, with the footballers to put some money in. And I got 50 Cent in the film. That was 50 Cent's one of his first movies. Um, at the time, um, again, police and that was getting involved. And uh, yeah, I did a film with 50 Cent, Danny Dyer, Tamar Hassan, Asha. Ashley, we did all that again. That went out there cinema again. So but that, I, I was, was making fifty moves. was fifty, and that was when fifty was fifty. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So we gave him like one of his first film roles, movie roles, and he did that on the back of our friendship that we had already built because I was already in New York at these time in the in, in the pavements out there. People, artists, artists was coming, used to come to the UK. They they used to have to have permission. Now these artists of UK artists are running around with all these jewellery on and all this mad stuff like the Americans couldn't even do that back in the day do you get what I'm trying to say so they should be thankful the streets have changed like back in the day you had to, to wear a Rolex you had to be somebody like it's dangerous yeah we all heard about the Ja Rule yeah it cool. yeah. there you go like by the same time like I'm not saying I'm not glamorising anything but I'm it's just saying actually what it the was. reality is to back in the day to wear a Rolex you had to be someone you couldn't just be a man Nobody, and then you put in showing all your jewelry out and all that because it would be dangerous, man. That's 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 putting you and your family in, at risk. Like, and I don't, I think a lot of these times gonna go where these kids and that need to realize this jewelry thing and all this type of stuff. Make some more positive, better investments because you're putting you and your family at risk for some metal and and diamonds. But man, will come for them and take them. There's people out there that will scheme on you. Think about it a bit more. But anyway, back to the. Um, Dead Man Running, done Dead Man Running. So, again, rapping, to me, didn't see the money. Film, I was starring with some of the biggest guys. I'm not saying it was the biggest film ever or whatever, but for me, coming from where I come from, yeah, and I'm still starring next to 50 Cent, Danny Dyer, Tama Hassan, I was watching in the business. Do you get know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it was still a big deal for me, plus being part of the whole produ production. Um, so then it was like, what's my next move? Do I want to be an actor? No. Because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing brothers around me, they ain't got no money like that. Not saying they're broke, but the, the type of money, I've seen money. So not the money that I want to kill myself at. Like, how much does a main actor get paid? Is that it? Do you get what I'm trying to say like that? So I'm, I've always been someone that, you know, for me, it's like, never put all your eggs in one basket, because if the basket drops, you lose everything. Yeah, so I've always been someone that tries to map out and put things in all different places. 